So you've decided to go down the righteous path of being a network engineer. Well, there's a lot of talk about different types of fundamentals and understanding packet flow and IP subnetting, all that stuff, it's all important. But in today's video, we're gonna be talking about hands-on knowledge. So we're gonna cover eight things that all new network engineers should know how to do on a network device. Hey everybody, what's good, what's going on? JB here with another Cyber Insight video. Thanks for coming back to the channel and making it your new spot for cyber network knowledge. Well, as I mentioned, getting into the field of network engineering has a lot of different types of information and knowledge that you wanna make sure that you're learning and practicing as you continue to move forward. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through some different types of commands and configurations that you as a new network engineer wanna practice and become proficient at because these are the fundamental things that you're gonna use as your career and your skill set continues to expand and you become a more proficient and seasoned network engineer. Before we hop into the video, you know what you need to do. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, notify, all that good stuff, I appreciate it. So let's get into it. All right, so before we hop into this, let's talk about a few caveats because I'm sure certain people are gonna watch this and they're gonna have some other ideas or questions or comments and stuff like that. They might not agree with some of these things. So from my perspective, we're talking about different types of configurations and commands that uh, are applicable across all different types of network devices. So this isn't strictly a Cisco video or a Juniper video or something like that, although it is completely applicable to those different vendors. A second point is I'm looking at this from the perspective of fundamental configurations and commands. So there are more specific things that would make sense, but I'm kind of looking at this from the perspective of if I was teaching somebody how to do certain things on a network device, these are probably the first group of things that I think are important. And the last thing before we hop into this is that security is fundamental to understanding how to build out networks and configurations and stuff like that. I think in some cases, a lot of the topics related to security though, might be kind of the next level that I would walk people through. So those aren't necessarily gonna be covered in this video, but if enough folks enjoy this video, I do have another video lined up where we're gonna be doing the same type of thing, but looking at it from the perspective of security configurations on network devices. Before jumping into this, I do have a lot of different practical lab videos that I've made that actually cover the majority of the things that I'm gonna be talking about in this list. So I'll drop a link for that over here somewhere. And uh, yeah, go ahead and dive into that if you need some practice or maybe a little bit more deeper understanding or breakdown of some of the different things that I'm gonna be talking about here. All right, so the first one that I wanna talk about is accounts and permissions. If you're gonna be configuring network devices, accessing network devices, you need to know how to create the proper accounts on a device, how to uh, configure them in a way to give yourself the right privileges and permissions to be able to do the things that you need to do, how to create other accounts for other people and maybe limit some of those um, permissions. And then lastly, we need to know how to use the correct configurations when it comes to creating accounts so that the hashing used to protect the password is strong enough so that if somebody does capture the configuration somehow, they aren't able to crack the hashes that the password is kept in and they're able to figure out what your passwords are. Now, a more advanced topic, once you kind of figure that stuff out is how to configure AAA and how to use centralized authentication and, and things like that. Obviously, that's not the scope of something that we necessarily want to do right when we're getting somebody comfortable within the device, but it is something to be aware of that individual accounts on devices doesn't really scale very well in an operational environment. But when it comes to learning networking and networking configurations, it's all building blocks. It's all starting with the foundational information and then building the configurations on top of that so that you have a better understanding of how everything works and integrates together. But then eventually you get to the point where you understand how to take that and operationalize it and scale it properly. Configuration number two is VLANs, virtual LANs. So this is something that you are gonna use anywhere you go as long as you're a network engineer. This is pretty much how we go about breaking up and segmenting the network in a way where we can group computers together into logical groups so they're able to communicate with each other. Understanding what VLANs are, how to configure them, and then the different types of interfaces that you end up configuring with them is very, very important. And that actually leads us into our two next topics or configurations, and that is switch ports and trunk ports. So switch ports is gonna be what you would normally use 
when you configure a access port that's on a switch and you connect a PC or a server to it. There's some very basic configurations that we would end up doing with that in order to take that individual port and associate it with the right uh, VLAN as well as some other types of documentation, stuff like that, that we'd want to use on port. So we would want to use the, you know, a description command to let us know what the particular interface is uh, actually attached to. And then we probably would do some type of spanning tree configurations and some security configurations as well. Again, these are more advanced type of things that we would want to do after the fact, but getting comfortable with understanding what a switch port is, how to configure it, the different types of VLAN configurations and other types of information that's necessary, you know, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN, and then the number of whatever it is of the VLAN that you want to attach. These are all important things to understand. Conversely, that leads to topic number four, and that is trunk ports. So whenever we have all of these virtual LANs within our environment, if we want to share or allow traffic between uh, the same VLAN between multiple switches, we need to configure what's called a trunk port. And a trunk port is gonna allow traffic that's tagged with these individual VLANs to go across a link between two different layer two devices. When it comes to configuring these trunk interfaces, we have to make sure that we're using the right trunking protocol, which at this point is uh, .1Q and we need to make sure that we are allowing the proper VLANs to go across those trunk interfaces, and we need to make sure that we have the same native VLAN or VLAN that actually uh, will not be tagged across the trunk port. These kind of start to get a little bit more into some security configurations, but these are actually commands that are necessary in order to get the trunk to be operationally functioning. Now, the flip side of that is that there are certain ways that we want to configure that in a secure manner, which kind of deviate from the default way that we would configure those. For instance, we wouldn't want to just allow all VLANs across the trunk, which is the default state, right? We would want to be specific with only allowing the particular VLANs that are actually on those particular switches and that actually have a need to communicate back and forth. So at this point, we've covered what we need to do from a layer two perspective. When we're talking about VLANs and switch ports and trunk ports and all of that goodness. Now getting to the point where we're able to send traffic back and forth between different subnets and different networks requires routing. And so what that means is that we need to have an understanding of how to implement a layer three interface on a device that supports routing, right? So a layer three interface could be a whole bunch of different things. It could be uh, an actual interface that has an IP address on it. So it could be a physical interface with that IP address. It could be a interface VLAN, which is a virtual or logical interface that we end up putting an IP address on that isn't necessarily associated with an individual interface, but allows traffic to route within the VLAN that is on the device or multiple VLANs that are on the device if they have multiple interface VLANs. And this comes back to making sure that the correct interface is enabled, configured with enabled routing on the actual device itself, um, and leans on kind of that fundamental knowledge that we need to have as far as understanding IP addresses and subnetting. So if we have layer three routed interfaces, this is gonna lead us into our sixth point, and that is understanding static routing. So as I mentioned before, routing is being able to take traffic from one subnet or network and allow it to communicate to another subnet or network. Now, since we talked about what routing is and routed interfaces, in order to get that traffic to be able to communicate back and forth, sometimes we need to be able to put in some configurations that lets the device know where other networks are. So that's gonna take implementing some type of routing. Now, we have routing protocols, um, and that's really, really important. And those are things that you're gonna wanna understand whether you're going after your Network Plus or CCNA or JNCIA Junos or you know all of these different things. Again, we're talking about the first foundational building blocks when it comes to getting your hands dirty on a device. So while we would jump into routing protocols and that's natural, the first thing that you wanna focus on is understanding how to do static routing. 
And that's just when we implement some type of configuration that says to get to network A, you either need to go out this particular interface or you need to send all of the traffic for that network to this particular IP address. Once we have a fundamental understanding of how static routing works, then we're able to build on top of that and start looking at some different types of routing protocols, whether they are IGP or, or interior gateway protocols or EGPs, exterior gateway protocols. And I've done a few different practical labs on how to do all of this different routing and stuff like that. So make sure that you do check out uh, some of those playlists that I have that cover those particular topics. Now the configurations that go with topic seven kind of start to veer a little bit into the security side, but also are very, very important from an operational perspective and understanding what's going on with your device. And that is enabling the right type of logging. Now this differs between the different types of vendors and the particular types of devices that you have. So I'm not gonna be able to tell you, okay, there's three specific commands that you need to enter on your device to make sure that you're doing all of the logging that you need to do. It's not as simple as that. But understanding the importance of logging is really important. And then depending on your particular vendor, you need to make sure that you do have logging enabled, that you do have the um, right type of events actually being logged. And then a little bit more advanced, but something that's equally important is making sure that you are sending the logs off your device to some type of central repository or SIM. Now that might be a little bit more advanced from just understanding what logging is and how to turn it on but it's gonna be really, really important from the perspective of eventually your network devices do overwrite the logs that you have on the device. So they're not gonna be there in perpetuity and depending upon what you have going on your device and all of the different types of events that you're logging, you might actually lose that data very, very quickly. So it's important to understand how to turn it on, how to get it off your box and make sure that you are logging the right types of events. And that leads to kind of the last commands or topics and that is for all of these things that we talked about, whether it is the accounting, layer two configuration, switch ports, interfaces, VLANs, enabling routing, trunk ports, static routes, uh, the logging stuff itself, is that you want to become familiar with the commands that show you the operational status of all of these things. So in Cisco or in Juniper, these would be your show commands. So you wanna make sure that you know how to see your routing table, right? Show IP route on a Cisco device. You wanna make sure that you're able to see how your interface is configured, right? So maybe that's a show interface and whatever the particular interface is. You wanna be able to look at your configuration, right? So you wanna understand how to be able to look at that and maybe be able to optimize the way that you are looking at that. So maybe, uh, you know, within Juniper, for instance, you're gonna do show config and then pipe, grep, and look for the particular uh, keywords or strings that are of interest to you. So when you are practicing these things out and you are uh, configuring them, I would urge you to also look for the related show commands that deal with the particular topics or configurations that you're implementing. This is gonna help you out a lot when it comes to making sure things are working properly and, and troubleshooting different types of events that happen in your environment. So there it is. There are eight basic, simple configurations and topics that you as a network engineer wanna make sure that you get your hands on and are able to start working through not just the knowledge that's in your head, but also practicing these and building your skills with these. Uh, for the most part, depending upon the type of vendor that you have, that you have a few different options for practicing this without actually getting your hands on any hardware. If you follow my Network Plus practical labs or my CCNA practical labs, you've seen that I'm a big proponent of using Cisco Packet Tracer. Absolutely fantastic for being able to work through all of these different configurations. And as I mentioned before, I have a whole bunch of different videos that kind of cover a lot of the things that I talked about today. If you're using something like Juniper, on the other hand, they have a great virtual lab set up called VLabs, and that allows you to take any of the devices that they have in their virtualized portfolio, and you're actually able to use them with full licenses to be able to practice all of the different types of configurations that might be interesting to you. All right, so if you have any questions, comments, or queries on any of this, throw this down in the comments down below. Hit me up with any other ideas for any other videos that you wanna cover. Again, if you liked the video and it was helpful and entertaining to you, go ahead and hit all those buttons that matter. You know what you need to do. All right, go get at it and have a great week. I'll talk to you soon. All right, bye.